So hello, welcome today. This is a video about a root canal where the access cavity wasn't as traditional as you'd like to like to think. So I'll give you the background on this. This um, this patient actually attended me uh, for, it was an external referral for a root canal on a completely different tooth. Um, what I like to do is I like to do complete um, checkups on every single external referral that I get. And I noticed that this tooth had a buccal abscess. So we took a, an x-ray and you can see here with the x-ray that there is a radiolucency lateral on on the tooth. So um, I removed the filling and then um, buccally and I saw that the tooth uh, was necrotic. So there was a pinpoint exposure and uh, there was no uh, pulp inside the tooth. So what I did in this case is I, uh, I cleaned out all the decay in the tooth and I placed a uh, PTFE and some leather mix over the, uh, the the exposure and then I filled it with composite and then got the patient back in uh, for the full root canal. And what I've done is I've done a, a buccal access rather than going through the top of the tooth. And um, I suppose in a way you, you, you could ask yourself why, why have I done this? Well, mainly to preserve uh, tooth tissue but it does have its challenges um, especially with uh, straight line access so uh, sometimes it can be difficult to access the tooth if you're kind of doing it at a 90 degree angle or a near 90 degree angle so as with always all cases I am using a size 10 K file to scout the initial part of the uh, of the canal and as you can see here, it is kind of like a 45 degree angle. So I've got to be really, really super careful about um, torsional uh, fracture here with, with the tooth. And I'm just very, very gently watch winding my hand file to kind of um, to kind of shape the coronal to mid third. I did feel like the uh, the file was actually reaching down the tooth quite easily, and I thought to myself, I think I could take a, a working length um, measurement here with my apex locator quite easily. But actually, in this case, um, I couldn't quite get the zero reading on uh, the apex locator. So at this point, I'm not gonna push the, the, the file uh, too far. I'm gonna measure that K file and see how far I got. And then I'm going to use these fantastic uh, rotary files um, that kind of shape the tooth. And, and I'm gonna measure the, the rotary file and I'm gonna make sure it's about one to two millimeters away from as, as far as I could get with the, uh, with the, with the ham file with lots of irrigation. So this uh, this rotary file here is a 1503 high flex and what I'm doing is I'm I'm not pushing it any 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 far farther than I should do. I'm just opening up the coronal to mid third. And as you can see here the 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 access or the or the or the yeah the access to the to the to the canal itself is opened a bit more. So I'm going to take a second attempt here at working length determination. So I'm going to get the uh, the size 10K file and then I am going to um, try and reach the apex. And, and this time the, the, the ham file actually reaches quite um, easily a little bit further, but it doesn't quite get that zero reading on the apex locator. So I am doing a little bit of watch winding here and it's, and it's really, really tough. So it's at this point I'm thinking to myself, maybe the apex is quite complex and I am going to have to back off a little bit. Try not to push these too far because you might ledge or, or, or more, um, more importantly, you might uh, fracture the file, ham file. So I, again, I'm going to measure how far the ham file went and then I'm going to use these uh, rotary files to open up the coronal third. And then I'm gonna have another attempt at uh, trying to find the apex with this size 10K file. Um, I suspect that the fact that I have done a buckle access in this case is making it more difficult for me to reach the apex. And that's mainly because it's not so much the tip that's getting stuck, but it's it's getting uh, the file is getting bound further up. So I'm going to use these D-finders here and I'm going to make a little kink on the end. So these D-finders are absolutely amazing. 
and they for some reason just find the apex really really well so you're going to make a small small kink on the end and then you're going to very very sort of gently sort of feel in a 365 degree motion to see if you can get that sort of um that that kink or bend within the apex and get it get the hand file past that point and as you can see here i've just dropped in and we've got a nice zero reading on the uh on the on this this d finder it's at this point when you uh when you get to the apex um you don't want to pull the, the ham file out straight away you want to ensure that you've shaped whatever you've bypassed um uh, uh, uh enough so you get a higher diameter file in um in uh, pa past, past where it was getting stuck before. So in, in this case, and this is probably the worst video of this ever, is I'm very, very gently moving the, the hand file up and down to try and shape out that kind of either ledge or um, anatomical um, anomaly or some kind of like fin or fissure that the, the hand file was getting stuck on before. So it's a bit of in and out. And again, lots and lots and lots of irrigation. You'll notice throughout this video that I'm just using loads of irrigation. I'm now using the rotary file, uh, the 1504 high flex, and this goes all the way to the length. So once we've shaped out that, whatever that was getting stuck on, the, the, the these rotary files have got nicely to length. I'm going to now um, increase the taper and increase the, uh, the, the the tip size of the uh, of the shaping file. This is a 2004. And I actually, when I'm having trouble getting to the end, I like to use T mode on my AI motor. So T mode, if you're if you're not aware, it is a you press a button and it and it watch winds the the file. And then when you feel like you've just got past the um, the, the point where you were getting stuck, you then press another button and then it and then it turns. So, cone fit radiograph. We're using a matched cone here. We've we've deliberately used a lower tapered uh, file because of the uh, calcified nature. And also, what I don't want to do is I don't want to create too much um, uh, weakness in the in the in the coronal port part portion of the of the tooth. Um, because if you use a higher tapered file, it's going to really really pull out a lot of the the dentin. I suppose there was a, um, a a possible suggestion of a double canal, but I had a little look inside the the the, um, the access cavity there, and I was I was happy that there wasn't a double canal. And then the final part of the irrigation is we're going to activate the, uh, the the irrigants with these ultrasonic activators. You'll notice when you use it, all the kind of debris that was stuck to the walls of um, of the canal sort of dislodged so you can see the the, uh, the the irrigant is nice and clear here but once you irrigate it it, it, it gets all all the nastiness out it's, it's absolutely fantastic lots and lots and lots and lots of irrigation and then we're going to aspirate the irrigation get the canal dry as possible and then use these matched uh, paper points and you want to get the again the canal as, as dry as possible um, sometimes you can pull these um, paper points out and you can see where the uh, the paper point is moist and then you can measure that and you can just confirm the working length of that as well that's if you're not happy uh, with the with with the cone fit radiograph and now we're going to obturate it. This is again, as with most things, I'm using uh, one uh, fill. This is a biosamic sealer with these absolutely fantastic visco tips. And then um, we're going to do the the comb fit, uh, the, the the comb fit and the compaction. So what I like to do is I like to fill the uh, coronal to mid third with the biosamic sealer and very 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 gently push the GP point to length. I don't want to jam the GP point in. I want to very, very gently push it to length. And then we're going to sear it off with this heated plugger. Um, try not to use the heated plugger uh, too far down the canal with a bioceramic because it makes the bioceramic um, uh, not work very well. And then finally, um, with the obturation, we're going to compact um, the, the cone down with some Mach 2 pluggers. And again, I, I said this once, say a thousand times, I used to be very, very ginger. 
with the Mac 2 plugger and now I like to really really push it in hard and make sure the uh, the cone is compacted into the root canal and the sealer gets into all the little nooks and crannies and um, a lot of the time though I have to um, make sure the patient's aware that I'm going to push down quite hard so th at this point now I'm going to give it a good old push let the patient know and um, and yeah super super nice and um, yeah that's the root canal done Usually at this point, I'll take an X-ray to see if the the compaction is uh, is is satisfactory, and then I just fill the canal with it with a composite, and overall it looks looks pretty nice. You know there is a, a a strong suggestion of a double root here, but I'm just not convinced at all. I could see um, the the access com cavity completely. And I could see that the uh, I could see the, the the lingual wall with my microscope. It doesn't really come out very well um, on the video here, but on my microscope I could see directly um, the the lingual wall, and I could see that 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 wall went into the the the, the root that I was shaping. So um, I warned the patient that maybe it might be a double canal, but I'm not convinced. I suppose there's an argument to say I could take a CBCT, but on the day, I'm relatively happy. And um, yeah, nice result. Listen, if you like these videos, uh, I like making them. As I always say, I like making them. Please like, and more importantly, subscribe. And comment in the section below any questions and, and any criticism as well. You feel like something wasn't done right or you would have done something differently. Please, let's have a discussion and um, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.